Have you seen the automated solution tailored for med tech companies that help you test regulatory compliance? Do you know the best way to get started with Playwright? And what is the best way to enhance front-end performance testing using Playwright and Lighthouse? Find out in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of June 2nd. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. I used to work for a healthcare company, so I know that in the medical technology sector, where software reliability can mean the difference between life and death, regulatory compliance is crucial. And that's why this next post by Test Results really caught my eye. Let's check it out. And this is a case study all about how Test Results is a solution tailored for med tech companies. And it goes over how it helps you ensure adherence to stringent testing regulations. The platform facilitates automated, human-like software testing addressing challenges specific to med tech, such as the need for particular license setups and automated installation, qualification, operational qualification procedures, also known as IQ, OQ procedures. And it also helps eliminate the need for complex manual testing techniques. And the platform reduces the demand on testing resources and time, helping you to automate tasks that were previously manual and labor intensive. It simplifies the automation of complex test cases, such as handling iframes, browser tab switching, and multi-factor authentication. And by closing existing automation testing gaps, testers can achieve comprehensive testing coverage, enhancing productivity, ensuring the high quality of medical device software. So if you're looking for one of the best solutions for end-to-end -end testing in regulatory environments, like end-to-end -end medical tech, life science, banking, et cetera, you need to check out test results now using the link testguild.me forward slash medtech. And you can find that link down below. So one question I've been asked a lot lately is how to get started with Playwright. Well, I found this next resource to help you get started with Playwright test automation. Let's check it out. And this is how Microsoft just announced the launching of its Playwright training module. And this module guides users through the process of using Playwright to test a simple web application. And participants will learn how to run tests, view test reports, and understand the structure of a Playwright project. And this course also covers how to use Visual Studio Code to run and debug tests, as well as to record new tests and create a test suite. The module includes exercises on getting started with Playwright, deconstructing a test using Playwright and Visual Studio Code, and manually creating a test specification. And it was designed for beginners to provide a comprehensive introduction to end-to-end -to -end testing with Playwright. So if you haven't started with Playwright now, if you want to find a quick way to do it, you can find that module in the links down below. So the c Shop BDD solution Wreck and Roll is on a roll because it just announced its latest version release of version 2.0. What does it include? Let's check it out. So Gasper just announced the release of Wreck and Roll version 2.0. And this new release includes significant updates and improvements, such as the integration of the internal dependency injection framework, Bodai, directly into Wreck and Roll, which helps eliminate the need for separate packages. And this change simplifies the configuration of test dependencies and enhances the overall functionality of the platform. Additionally, Wreck and Roll also incorporated the Microsoft Extension Dependency Injection plugin into its core repository, thanks to a generous contribution by Mark Koik. And this update is part of a series of fixes and enhancements aimed to improving user experience and system stability. Users are encouraged to upgrade to the latest version, version 2.01, to benefit for these improvements. And if you haven't moved over yet from SpecFlow to Wreck and Roll, this is probably a good time to do so since Wreck and Roll seems to be on a roll, constantly updating. So this is something you need to check out. Find it once again in those comments down below. Do you use Cypress? Well, I found another plugin that I think is really going to help you. Let's check this out as well. So I just realized Dennis has released a new Cypress plugin called Cypress Plugin Last Failed. This plugin works in conjunction with Cygrep to rerun the last failed test, offering a more streamlined testing process. And this plugin introduces a new Cypress run command to execute only the tests that have failed in the previous run, along with a UI toggle in Cypress to filter and rerun failed tests within a given spec. It also supports continuous integration, continuous deployment environments, making it really versatile for various testing scenarios. And if you use Cypress, give Dennis some love, stop the GitHub project, and give it a try for yourself. And thank you, Dennis, for all these awesome contributions you've been giving to the Cypress automation community. 
Also, as I was scrolling through LinkedIn, I noticed that a session I moderated a few weeks ago for the Mobile Testing and Experience Summit is also now available on demand. So the session was called Champion Automation, How Quality Leaders Can Drive Operational Support. And if you missed it, you definitely should check it out and register to watch the on-demand video. We had an awesome expert panel with Chris Huff, a CTO at Rent.com, Lee Rogerman, engineering leader at Weight Watchers, and John Robinson, chief storyteller at Next IT. We had a real deep discussion around topics like how do you justify the investment in automation to your executives, how to manage change in large global teams, metrics for measuring success in automation, future trends in automation, and a bunch more. So if you're trying to get company buy-in for automation and you want to know how to get your whole team contributing to the automation project and creating an automation culture, as well as tips for success with enterprise-level automation, you don't want to miss this recording and you can find the link for it down below. Do you know what the Liskov substitution principle is for testers? No? Well, let's find out. And this, once again, is by Kristen Giacovoni. And this is part of a blog post, part of a series around solid principles. And the latest drop is all about the Liskov Solution Principle LSP, an essential concept in object-oriented programming. So Kristen breaks down this principle, which was introduced by computer scientist Barbara Liskov, states that objects in a superclass should be replaceable with objects from a subclass without altering the program's functionality. And this is crucial to ensuring that code remains consistent and reusable. And Kristen illustrates this principle with a practical example involving a class used for waiting for web elements to become visible or clickable. She demonstrates how extending this class incorrectly can violate the LSP leading to inconsistencies by making necessary adjustments such as creating additional methods to handle specific functionalities. Developers can ensure that classes adhere to the LSP principle, maintaining code reliability and simplicity. So you definitely want to read more about this to take a deep dive and try it for yourself using the links down below. All right, once again, on LinkedIn, this next article caught my attention because I didn't know about this tool. Maybe I'm out of the loop, but it's called Carpenter. What does it do? Well, let's check it out. So Matthew points to an article they wrote on Carpenter and how PerfScale has released insights on enhancing the performance and cost efficiency of Carpenter, which is an open source Kubernetes autoscaler. And the article goes into detail how Carpenter offers a cost-aware node provisioning and node consolidation, leading to significant cluster cost reductions. However, by integrating with PerfScale with Carpenter, organizations can now achieve an additional 30 to 50% in cost savings. And the article goes on to talk about how PerfScale optimizes Carpenter to provide deeper insights into workload resource utilization, preventing over-provisioning and it goes over why this combination ensures more efficient node provisioning and better application reliability. So if you're doing anything with Kubernetes, definitely something you should check out. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. And another LinkedIn post that caught my attention was on how to enhance front-end performance with Playwright in Lighthouse. So I found this on Michael's LinkedIn page where he pointed to a recent blog post on the Green Report that outlines the use of Playwright and Lighthouse for front-end performance testing. So if you don't know, Lighthouse is an open source tool from Google and it audits web pages for performance, accessibility, SEO, and more. And combined with Playwright, a browser automation library that you know is developed by Microsoft, this setup allows for continuous monitoring and optimization of a website's front end performance. So this article really emphasizes the importance of key performance metrics, such as first contentful paint, large contentful paint, time to interaction, and first input delay. And it provides a detailed guide on setting up these tools, creating scripts for performance audits, and integrating the tests into your CI CD pipelines to ensure ongoing performance evaluation and improvements. And last up in security news, Night Vision has unveiled a new software testing and security solution. What's it all about? Well, let's check it out. Well, this tool allows developers to set up and run scans within minutes, providing intelligence on vulnerabilities and their locations, enhancing both security and development efficiency. And the new solution employs a modern gray box security testing approach, focusing on identifying exploitable vulnerabilities before production. And this method helps reduce development costs, strengthen security, and lighten the load on development and security teams. All right, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode in under 10 minutes, head on over to the links in the first comment down below. So that's it for this episode of the Test Skill News Show. I'm Joe. 
I managed to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.